All right, what's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and I'm going to be showing you today how to do smooth camera movement. So this is gonna be perfect for your horror games or any sort of exploration games uh, from first person's perspective, such as uh, Gone Home or PT or anything like that. So what I've done is remove the gun, that way it kind of gives you more of the feeling of what's going on. Um, and it's gonna be hard to tell in the video, admittedly, uh, because you don't know when I'm moving the mouse. But what the smooth movement of this camera is actually doing is it is when you take your pedal or your foot off the pedal of the gas in your car, then basically your car will slow down over time. It's basically that, but for your mouse. So it's a pretty funny analogy, but I think that one works pretty well. Okay, so it makes like a really smooth camera movement as opposed to just like, and I'll, I'll show you, like you can see it here. I'll show you, whoops, I pressed the wrong button. I will show you kind of the example without all this. So what this normally looks like. And I, th I think you can tell, this is me doing the same movement, but I am basically just literally, I'm at a point, then I'm done. I'm at a point, then I'm done. I move the mouse and I'm stopped. I move the mouse and I'm stopped. With this one, we'll compile and save. With this one, I move the mouse, oh, I move the mouse and I stopped. Move the mouse and I stopped. Move the mouse and I stopped. And you can see it keeps moving for a bit until it gradually goes to a slow stop. Anyway, I just wanted to kind of explain what smooth movement means uh, since some people click on this tutorial. Might not know if that's what they're looking for or not. If that's what you're looking for, you came to the right place. Uh, and just don't mind this other stuff. This was for my uh, heartbeat sensor oscillator video that I did for the material. Uh, if you want to see this one, I'll put an icon in the top right on how to make that. But that's not what this video is concerned about today. So, okay. So I'm gonna save this just because I hate the little asterisk here and literally no other reason. Um, I don't need this for any reason. Okay, so. You can do this anywhere you want, really, as long as you can get access to the player pawn, which is pretty much everywhere. Outside of, like, widgets. It would be weird to do it in a widget. But you could do it in um, the game mode or the character. So I just chose to do it in the game mode. I think it's a good place to do it since this is for single-player experiences, so you don't have to deal with any multiplayer stuff. And also, it's not necessarily good to do it right in the character, because if you have any sort of instances where you want this to occur, but you want to do it in a cutscene, or you want to do it in some other NPC object, like you're taking control of them for a viewpoint, you could still do it in the game mode. You don't need to do a specific character. You just need to put a camera on them. So here's how this is going to work. So um, I set it in begin play. That way it just can happen all the time once we take control of the character, once the game mode even enters begin play, okay? So I'll give you the, the short run through of it first. So we're going to get the player pawn, get the camera on it, and then just set some settings that Unreal automatically has by default. We don't have to make anything new. And then we're just gonna attach it to the camera component that's already on here, okay? And the way we're going to attach it, so just make sure if you want this to work, this is what it's gotta look like out here. So you go to your character, and let me get rid of everything that's not the character. Here we go. So here's my first person character, which if you uh, made a new project and selected the C++ or the Blueprint first person, this will work either way. But if you're using this template, this will work. You will already have this in your scene, so you won't have to make this. Otherwise, just make sure you have a character right here, okay? And then make sure on the character itself, you have a first person camera. And then we're gonna do stuff to this first person camera to make this work. All right guys, let's finally get into it and make this happen. So what we're doing is the smooth movement, right? So what we basically need to do is enable camera lag. So the way to do that, this is a blueprint only, or blueprint specifically tutorial. You don't need to touch any code to make this one work. So uh, on begin play, instantly what I go to do is set the camera I want to apply this to, okay? 
So since we have a camera attached to our player, I go ahead and get player pawn. You could also get player character. I personally prefer get player character, so I'm gonna actually replace that and use that. But basically, uh, we're going to get components by tag and get components by tag and look for your camera component. And then I'm searching for tag camera. And all you have to do to make this tag show up is if you go to the camera that I was just telling you about, you can scroll down and go to tags, component tags, hit the little plus to add one because you'll have zero by default otherwise, and add camera. And you can call this whatever you want. This could be called Todd. And as long as you're searching for Todd, it will find it. And then just get the first index since there's only one. So you can just grab zero. And then set first person camera. Uh, this is a variable I made, which is literally a camera component object reference right here. Camera component object reference. So it's empty. You just add it in here, hit this plus, add this variable. And then basically set this, these three things that you just got, set it to the camera. That's all we're doing. We're literally finding the camera that's attached to the player, but we're doing it in Blueprint as opposed to hard coding it or something like that. That's what I was talking about where it's good to do it in the game mode because you don't need to have it on a specific character or in any of your character classes if you only want it in one certain case. So there you go. Okay. Now, and I'm going to actually change this here. It's going to bother me. Sorry about that. Sometimes halfway through my videos, I'm like, no, I don't really want to do it that way. Make sure it's the worst. Cool. Just want to make sure I didn't screw anything up for you guys. Okay. So now what we're doing is actually adding or editing the, well, we're adding the spring arm component. And then on the spring arm component is where we can enable camera lag. So camera lag is what will allow that smooth, like kind of gliding uh, rotation on the camera. So I just use the camera that I set out or that I, excuse me, set as a variable. So FP camera, first person camera. I get the relative transform and add the spring arm component. This relative transform will tell where the spring arm component should be. You want it to be on your camera. Um, otherwise you can spawn it anywhere in the world and attach it and it will still work, but it won't be in the right spot. So that's not what you want. So just make sure you do this. Um, right click and do, I think it is literally, yeah, it is literally just add spring arm component. So just select that one. And then make sure you attach your character that you want to apply this to, which player index is zero if you're doing a first person game. Otherwise you can just grab the player from the player ID or however you have it set up. Okay. And then there's just a few more steps we have to do. So there's one thing, one more thing we have to do with the camera itself. And what this is, is you're gonna take the camera and set, this is something that Unreal already makes for you in the camera component class. So you don't have to make any of these variables you see in the future here. But in this camera, there's a use pawn control rotation. And you wanna set it and set it to false. If you set it to true, then since you're, it, what this does is it makes the camera use your pawn's rotation. That's how it works. So it basically won't deal with anything else that we do after this. It'll just make it so, okay, your pawn is done rotating, so is the camera, but that's not what we want. That's enabled by default, so we wanna turn it off. The rest of these are all things that the spring arm that we just made is going to do. So if you drag from your spring arm component, you see I have a line going down here. These are all reroute nodes if you don't know how to do that. You can double click anywhere on this and drag off of this and you'll have another reroute node. Um, you can also just right click and do reroute, add reroute node. There you go. Okay. So this is just one continuous line. but. From the spring arm component, we want to set use pawn control rotation to true because the spring arm component and the camera are rotating differently now. So we want the spring arm to stop rotating when the, when the uh, player is done rotating, when the pawn is done rotating. But we don't want the camera to stop rotating because if the camera stops rotating, then you don't get that, that input lag, right? It would just stop right away. So make sure you do this. And then, believe it or not, Unreal also has a boolean called enable camera rotation lag. And it's from the spring arm component as well. Definitely enable that. If you don't enable it, you'll see the same thing as before. It's very stiff and just stops right away. The lag just applies it gradually over time so that you get that nice feeling. Now this next part is kind of optional, but it is something I wanted to bring up for the video. 
So uh, again, off of the spring arm component that we made. And you can save this out to a variable if you want. I just didn't feel it was necessary because I'm not going to use it outside of begin play. Uh, it has a variable called camera rotation lag speed. So I went ahead and uh, removed the lerp uh, simply because I didn't feel like it was necessary anymore. I originally had went into going about this and talking about this lerp as kind of necessary to make this happen. I was This video is actually uh, a suggestion from my friend Robert. So I was trying to do it based on how I described it to him, but I realized this is just adding extra complexity for no reason. So I went ahead and removed the lerp and just set a <laughs> rotation lag speed of 7.5. But anyway, uh, if you make this a crazy value, like make it 150, then you'll see there is actually rotation lag, believe it or not. But it ends so fast because the speed is so fast that there's basically no lag, right? However, you make it a really slow value, like three, then you're gonna see it really heavily. It's gonna look like it's moving you all around, right? It looks like you're really dizzy or something. <laughs> so I think like 7.5 seems to be a pretty good value, but you could use really whatever you want, just whatever feels the best for your game. Okay, and then the last thing I do is I go ahead and set the target arm length to zero. You will get like a little bit of sway, which is from the spring arm, and you can combat that in a few different ways. But honestly, I just, I kind of like it. I like the way it feels. It, it feels more like, again, if you were doing PT or one of those walking simulators, when you do rotate, you don't rotate at a solid base. You do actually rotate around a point, right, in real life. So when you do this, I actually like the, the feeling of it, how you, it kind of moves your body with the way you're rotating. Okay, and lastly, what we're gonna do is just attach the spring arm to the camera. Because if you do all this and don't attach the spring arm, then you're back where you started at the first place, right? So, all you gotta do is take your camera as the target, put the spring arm as the parent. All right, so go ahead and right click and type attach to component. And you can you you can uh, use this default scene root one that comes up, but then get rid of it and use your camera as your target, and use uh, your spring arm component as your parent. I'll show you since this is kind of whoops, since this is kind of more in depth. There's a few options to set here. I wanted to kind of redo this so you guys could see it. There we go. That should be easier to see. Um, and then make sure when you're going through here, your location rules, you can do whatever you want. Um, snap to target, I believe, looks the best. I don't even know what that means, whether to weld together simulated physical bodies. I think it just means put them together, like when one rotates. Actually, I have no idea what this means, so I'm not going to try and explain it. <laughs> but um, I've never touched that in all the times I've used this node. So I would just recommend, well, you know what, let's learn together. This is all about learning, right? Does this do anything that we can tell? Not really. So I'm sure it does something down the line, but uh, I just leave it checked. <laughs> Probably a good idea to do that. But anyway, there you go. So if you start here and just go through, you can have a functioning um, smooth camera, basically. And again, for me, I think it was like a good horror game camera template or a good walking simulator uh, camera template. But anyway, guys, this is a special video for Robert. Um, I think I'm going to start doing two videos a week, or at least a video in the middle of the week every so often, which is basically just a video that uh, people have asked for that's not really in line with the different series that I'm working on, but I still want to be able to do it because I still want people to be able to learn and ask me to do certain videos, and then I want to be able to do it for them. So... This is just one of those videos. I just felt like doing it, and I had time, and I was like, hey, this would be fun. So if you have any ideas for any videos that you would like to show off or you would like to see so that you can learn how to do it, 
then please let me know what you're thinking, and I'll do my best to make it in a timely manner and actually show it so it can be of use to you. Um, but I think that's it for today, guys. So I just want to say a few things before I go. All right, so I just want to say that we do have a Discord channel that is intended for helping people who have issues with the programming tutorials or people who have ideas about any sort of tutorial that they want to see or any topic that they'd like to be focused more heavily next time. So if you guys are interested in joining the Discord, I have the link in the description. For whatever reason, it won't let me put up an iCard because YouTube's weird. But anyway, if you want to join, you can come join a community of 50 plus members who are very interested in helping you out and are very happy to communicate with each other. Thanks so much for everyone who supported us on Twitch. Uh, if you want to find videos of me that's more than just uh, an empty face speaking programming facts to you, you can go follow us on Twitch at SeanTheBro27 where we make videos about Apex Legends, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, Doom Eternal, all sorts of different games and basically just hang out and chill in a less professional less working environment like programming um anyway guys that's the rest of the stuff i had for this video but uh i'm sean the bro thank you so much for watching let me know anything you want to see down in the comments below and i will see you in the next episode guys goodbye